Hey there, it's Mindy. In today's video, I have three Dollar Tree DIYs for you in the modern boho style. I am also collaborating today with Amber at the channel DIY with Amber. Her channel will be linked in the description box, so be sure to check out her channel for lots of budget home decor DIYs. She does lots of farmhouse style and boho, and I think you'll enjoy her channel. We are sharing three modern boho style DIYs using Dollar Tree products. So get ready for lots of yarn. Let's get started. My first project is inspired by some farmhouse lanterns that I've been seeing some other creators make and they're generally made with four sides but since this is a boho DIY I thought I would try one with three sides. So I'm using three 8x10 canvases from Dollar Tree, some yarn and crochet yarn that I had on hand, a few small dowels also from Dollar Tree, and some wooden skewers. So I removed all the canvases from the frames and the best way I know how to do this is to use a flathead screwdriver and because as you can see the frames were not all the same wood color I went ahead and painted them black with my chalk paint. And if you get one of these that has the little openings you will need a smaller brush to get into those areas. So to start, I cut down a couple of skewers to fit inside the shorter end of the frame. And I did two for each canvas frame. And I'm just gonna glue these into the frame just about a quarter inch from the wood itself. And once my skewers are glued in, I'm going to take the caramel colored yarn and feed it through the bottom skewer, tie it on, and then loop it up above the top skewer. And I'm just going to keep wrapping it around the two skewers until I get across the, the entire frame. Just a quick note, because this is a longer video, I'm trying something new and I'm going to put the timestamps for each uh, DIY in this video, so check the description box if you want to go ahead and skip to a specific craft. So after a while of wrapping the yarn and trying to struggle to get it under each dowel or skewer, I ended up using a an embroidery needle which made this process a lot easier. And for the other two canvas frames I ended up um, leaving one end unglued and you'll see here I also added some wood beads which helped to cover up the glue. So here's what I did with the other two. I just left one side open which made it easier to wrap the yarn around the two skewers. And once I had all three frames wrapped in the yarn, I wanted to add a macrame detail. So I believe I used about 10 strands of the crochet yarn and I doubled the length so that it's long enough to cover the entire length the long way of the frame. So I added these on in between the caramel yarn and I looped it over and pulled it through. So I'll give you a little close up here. So 
So once I had all my strands looped onto that top skewer, I went ahead and added a third skewer to the outside of the frame right in the center, and I divided those strands in half. And what we're going to do is create a diamond pattern with these strands. So you want to take the strands from the left side and cross them over at an angle and you can go as far out or as close as you want for this step and I just looped it around that center skewer and tied a knot and I'll give you another close-up in just a second So to get that diamond pattern that I was talking about, we're going to take that first strand from the right side, feed it under the first strand that we crossed over and leave it over the, the other strands, bring it across and tie it down in the same way. And each strand will go under that opposite strand on the other side. It'll make sense in just a second. I'll, I'll bring you closer. So the closer you angle your strands to the center, the less of an opening it'll create. But I like—I really like this um, triangle that it created in the center. And I'm just going to fill that um, gap on the skewer with some more strands that I'll just loop over. So here are all three of my canvas frames and I just love how this looks. You could easily just make one of these and use it as a wall hanging, but I'm making a lantern so I'm going to attach these in a triangle using the short dowels from Dollar Tree and here's how they're going to come together. So I'll just glue a dowel to each side of the back frame and then I'll end up gluing that to the corner of the other and they'll come together like this. So to finish off the front of these I did end up cutting the fringe down at an angle and you'll see that in just a second. But this project took a long time. <laughs> I guess I was just being a little bit extra, but I really love how it turned out. Let me know in the comments if you would try this. My next boho DIY is a plant stand and I am using the Dollar Tree plungers. Yes, I said plungers. I'm not using that plastic part at the end so we could just get rid of that. And I'm also using a pizza pan and one of the placemats from Dollar Tree.
I wanted to attach the placemat to the inside of the pizza pan, but as you can see, it's a little bit larger. So an easy way to get this smaller is to just snip a little bit of the stitching and then it makes it so you can just pull it and it's in a big long strip, so just pull it apart and down until it fits the inside of the pan. And the reason I use this placemat is because the texture kind of reminded me of like a wicker or rattan material. So I just wanted to add that to the center of this planter. So for the dowels or plunger handles, I went ahead and cut it, cut each one down at an angle using my saw. And if you're going to do this, it's a 22.5 degree angle and I went ahead and marked the placement for each one. So once I had that set, I went out to my garage and used this Heirloom White, sorry that's out of focus, but this Heirloom White by Rust-Oleum and I spray painted the placemat and more of just the outside edge of the pizza pan because you won't be able to see the middle. This did take about three coats and it was super hot that day, so I had a fan blowing in the garage to get this to dry. But here it is when it's all done. And to attach my dowels, which will become the legs, I'm using some wood screws. And I started out with three quarter inch long screws, but I did go back and use a longer screw just to try to get this a little more stable. So I also added some PowerTac um, industrial adhesive so this would be nice and sturdy. I will admit it is a little bit wobbly still but I did test it out with something heavy. I had a little planter with some rocks in it that I used on the front porch so it wouldn't get blown away and that sat down on it just fine and it didn't shift or anything. So I think if you have um, the weight distributed on this, it should be fine. I am going to try and go ahead and see if I can maybe wrap some rope around the legs to see if that'll make it more stable. But if I do end up changing this, I will let you know in the comments. So here are my legs all attached. And to get the placemat on, I just used my hot glue. I will go ahead and link to a previous plant stand that I also made using Dollar Tree products if you're interested in that. I am still doing some research and deciding on what kind of plant I want to get to put here, but here it is with some faux greenery and I just love the simplistic natural look of this boho style plant stand. And for my third and final Modern Boho Dollar Tree project, I am using their waste baskets. And this was inspired by some modern uh, hanging pendant lamps that I've been seeing on Pinterest. I'll in insert a picture here, but I'm also going to use some yarn, which you can also find at Dollar Tree, and this pendant light kit that I got from Amazon and I will link that in the description box. You will also need some wire cutters and some floral wire. So to start this project I took one of the waste baskets and removed the bottom entirely and one tip that I will give you if you are going to try this is not to cut all the way to that uh, rounded metal piece that gathers the basket together. The end pieces that hang over are not fully attached so you'll want to be careful with that. Once you remove it 
just go ahead and bend those pieces over to the inside and the yarn will cover it. And for that second waist basket, I'm just going to cut a big enough hole in the center for my light kit to fit in. I did go ahead and test out the security of the light kit before I went ahead with the project and it is very secure. Uh, this light kit actually says it'll hold, I believe it's two pounds. I started with the light colored yarn and this one is from Dollar Tree. It's looking a little cream on the screen but it is a very light gray. So all I did here is feed it through the one of the very bottom wires and pulled it up as straight as I could. It did end up coming out at an angle because I didn't pay attention, but it was fine in the end. And I fed it through the hole in the top. Now, this is a very simple process, but it is very tedious. And eventually I did go ahead and use a needle to feed it through these holes at the top. So fear warning, this project takes hours to get done. You could easily do this with two lampshades that you just remove the fabric from, but this is a Dollar Tree project, so there you go. All I'm doing is wrapping continuously until I get around the entire wastebasket. And the Dollar Tree yarn did cover about a third of the wastebasket, so if you had three of these small skeins, you'd be able to cover the entire thing. I only ended up getting two of this color, so I used what I had on hand and created sort of a color block effect, and you'll see that process here. And you may be wondering why I'm wrapping the entire basket from the inside to the outside, but I did test this out just wrapping the outside, and if you do it that way, you will be able to see the wiring. So you might want to take my word for it and just wrap around. Buy extra yarn just in case. So here's the bottom waste basket, and of course this process was much easier because the opening is there and I can just feed the entire skein of yarn around the waste basket. So I'll smear you having to watch me wrap this yarn around the basket because again I was just being extra and here is the result. I couldn't find a good angle to show you how I attached it but all I did was cut strips of the floral wire and connected it at that center part there and twisted the wire on the inside. So you'll notice as well the bottom part here has an angled look and that's because I wrapped the yarn really tight so depending on how you wrap it you can actually change the shape of the wastebasket to create a different look. So even though this project took the longest, um, it is my favorite and here it is hung up in the corner in my living room. I think it looks so boho chic and modern and I just love the color block effect that I got and actually that was an accident. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know if you would try it yourself. Here it is at night.
if you are still here thank you so much for watching through the end don't forget to check out the description box for more information and for amber's channel be sure to go over and tell her i sent you as always if you enjoy this video give it a like leave me a comment and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already thanks for watching